Imagine an island that makes you feel you're in the middle of nowhere but is actually on the doorstep of metropolitan Melbourne. That's where we're heading. If you've never heard of French Island, you're not alone. It's a mystery, even to many Victorians, despite its outstanding natural environment. There's no bridge, no council, no council services, no public transport, and it's completely off-grid. Yet it's just 90 minutes away from Australia's second largest city. What kind of people live like this? And how do they manage in this day and age? This is going to be quite an adventure. We do have our favourites. Just to be clear, I'm not on a chook farm. This way. These are Lois's pets. Well, I like all animals. See, this is my thing. What I'd love to know is how you live completely off the grid. Um, we've got the wind generator and solar panels and um, a, a good storage bank of batteries. So. The power for the fridge, uh, washing machine, um, some people like the hairdryer, um, everything, to, I, I say, to keep a woman happy. <laughs> Do you have to be tough to live here? Probably just uh, a bit more open-minded because of the variety of people here. So you don't all have to be best friends, but you've got to get on? Yes because if the car breaks down and they're the only car passing when you're going to the ferry, you'd like them to pick you up. <laughs> because the island is two thirds national park and surrounded by water, land is finite and the amount of landfill you can have is limited. But with no council or council services, what do you do about recycling? Trust the French Islanders to have that well in hand. So we're trying to reduce the amount of loads we have to take off the island in terms of recycling our products. The community decided to get a crusher. This crusher crushes things down by about 90%. We're saving on resources of using the barge and petrol and driving to a, another waste transfer station. We handle it here. Then all the sand that you see, which is about 90% sand, goes to private properties and they either use it in their veggie gardens in their driveways to fill potholes or whatever they can do, concreting. So who needs a hardware store when you've got this? Yeah. <laughs> it feels good! <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm learning there are two sides to the locals. By having to fix or build stuff for themselves, by making do or doing without, they live as the early pioneers did. But by being early adopters of renewable technology, they themselves have pioneered sustainable living. Neil and his family bought figs a few years ago and developed it as a one-stop shop. Figs is a family affair, with Neil's wife, Claire, and daughter, Tanya, pitching in. We're the only shop and the only petrol station, so it's a bit of a, a hub of the islands, so it's a place where the locals can come and kind of socialise as well. I have to remind myself this thriving enterprise is powered solely by renewables. Solar latte, anyone? You would be considered a hippie a decade ago, 
but now you're considered sustainable, which is a really interesting factor in the way we've moved forward.